back hurt, but that don't mean I ain't still out here working. I'm just carrying squat. Go ahead and get into this video for today. We got Ola Run talking about the big waves he was making in the A. But I ain't gonna lie, I know Ola Run from beefing with a lot of niggas in the A. So let's go ahead and see what's going on with him. Uh. Ola Run was making big waves in Atlanta before he got locked up. Now he's free again and wants to take over the rap game. But today we're breaking down why he's the biggest op in Atlanta. Ola Runt came up in Zone 6, which is the same part of Atlanta that Gucci Mane is from. Ola got active in the streets early and started repping the Bloods and another crew called the Henchmen. Ola started getting locked up when he was a kid and was going in and out of juvie. Then when he was 16, Ola caught his first serious charge and got hit with a five-year sentence for armed robbery. Mm. Ola was already rapping before he got locked up, but catching a sentence like that is what made him switch up how he was moving and take rap more seriously. When he came home from prison, Ola's dad tried to keep him out of the streets and even built Ola a studio so he could focus on making music. In 2018, Ola started dropping tracks on SoundCloud and YouTube, and it didn't take long before he was getting some buzz on his name. He was running up bigger numbers every time he dropped. His track Crazy Story picked up a lot of attention, and in 2019, Ola got even more eyes on him when he dropped the track Feel Like Guwa. Yeah, Ola was making waves from. in Atlanta, and an A&R from Cinematic Group knew that Ola was on his way up. They signed Ola to the label, but that move allegedly sparked some major beef for Ola. After he dropped Feel Like Guwap, Ola linked up with Gucci Mane and started making music with him. Gucci featured Ola on a track called Lifers from Gucci's mixtape, Gucci Mane Presents So Icy Summer. The tape was supposed uh. to show off Gucci's artists on his 1017 label, and everyone thought Ola had to deal with Gucci. Ola was even spotted rocking the 1017 chain, so it looked like he was officially signed. But the situation wasn't that simple. Gucci executive produced Ola's second mixtape, begging for a body, but Ola was still signed to Cinematic. Gucci wanted to buy Ola out of his contract with Cinematic, but the money wasn't looking right for Ola, so he never actually signed the 1017. Then Gucci dropped the video for the lifers track he had with Ola, but Ola wasn't in the video. Rumors are going around that Ola and Gucci Mane were beefing over the whole label situation. That should have happened for real. Like a nigga is like, it's like, I can't, I ain't trying to be disrespectful what I compare it to, but it's like, just think about it like this. You sign, a nigga signed to another label, he ain't making no buzz. You rock with him off the strength. You're like, yeah, this nigga hard. Let me work with him. Let me get him a buzz and shit. But he still signs his weak ass label. So you also shit like, I just gave you this chain. I just did X, Y, and Z sign to me. He looking at you like, hell no, nah, cause you ain't paying me enough, but you signed to a shit label. So it's like a damn. So what we doing this whole type of situation and a damn, like you just gonna do me like that. So. Niggas don't gotta take it so personal, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But Ola went on No Jumper and said there weren't any real issues. Gucci wasn't the only huge artist in Atlanta who wanted to work with Ola, though. In an interview with Passion of the Wise, Ola said that Young Thug and 21 Savage both tried to sign him too. But Ola decided to keep rocking with Cinematic so he wouldn't be stuck under another rapper. The tension with Gucci wasn't the only problem Ola had because of the label situation, though. And what happened next sparked Ola's crazy beef with Playboy Cardi, too. Ola had ties to another dude in Atlanta named Big Bank. Right. Big Bank has a label called Duct Tape Entertainment, aka DTE, but he's also affiliated with a gang called Front Street Homicide. Ola and his dad both have ties to the henchmen, and back in the day, Homicide and the henchmen didn't have any beef. Ola's drama with Big Bank allegedly all started because Ola signed a cinematic instead of his DTE label, but Big Bank said it was Cap and that Ola was just mad because Big Bank wouldn't give him a feature. Nobody knows how it really went down. But then Ola dropped the track Mob Father and took shots at Big Bank when he rapped, Pussy nigga, you ain't it. Heard you got Big Bank, turn him to a lick. How the fuck you a dope boy if you ain't so shit? Moved to the three, got ran out the six. Ola dissed Big Bank's Damn. son Lil One DTE on the same track and rapped, He get kidnapped, don't get your kids snatched. Rather die in the pen, feel like thug life. Shout out the Reverend. Zone six, some deadly sins. Then Ola called Big Bank a rat and said, snatch up your love and make the Godfather gonna call the cops. After the track dropped, Ola Runt got arrested while he was at Lennox Mall. And while the cops were taking him away, Ola started yelling that Big Bank was a rat. Big Bank, you call these two, man. Big Bank clapped back and called Ola and his dad broke, but Ola said he had Walmart money and was running his own label. I got Walmart money on these four. I got Walmart money. I got Walmart money. It's, it's, how much they finna give me just for signing y'all to? Uh -huh. All right. These yeah. niggas broke in hell, man. I'm real OG, real bossed up with this shit, yo. Y'all need to stop playing. Ola also country posted niggas. an interview country where Big niggas. Bank said that Ola That's one thing about them country niggas. They gonna show their hand. They gonna be talking too much. They gonna be doing too much. It's just cause I can't blame them cause you know, it's hard coming out that country, man. That city life hard, but that country life hard. I ain't gonna lie to you. What's the next one up in Atlanta? Most definitely Ola Runt. He got my neighborhood. Going hard, yep. Ola, he going nuts right now. Ola was also dissing Big Bank's artist, Problem Child. 
So Problem Child clapped back on the track PP Son and rapped, catch a henchman out there slipping, hit him with that 223. Could have hit Lil Ola, but he took off for the street. Then in June 2020, the beef reached a whole new level and went from diss tracks to real violence. Problem Child was really tight with another homicide affiliate named Big Sosa. One day they were chilling on the block and shooting dice, but then Big Sosa got shot and killed. It's not clear how it went down, but Big Sosa was a huge loss for Homicide. The henchmen started clowning Homicide over Big Sosa's death right after it went down. Ola runs homie 24 left eye diss Big Sosa on IG Live. As you can see, I'm geek. The Sosa is on me. Happy motherfucking birthday. We're going up our fucking day. And that's allegedly why someone pulled up on 24 left eye and almost killed him. 24 left eye got rushed to the hospital after the ops hit him up. He survived the situation, but Big Bank's son, Lil 1DTE, self snitched like crazy on IG Live and said he was the one who pulled the trigger on 24 left eye. Bitch, man! Bitch, man! Oh my mama! Oh my mama! I ain't never seen so many henchmen running at the film. I seen niggas running. I seen, I seen Lil Left Eye. I seen, I swear to God, I seen Left Eye. Watching Ola get shot at, bro. I swear to God, I swear to God, I swear to God. Ola done went to the right. Left eye was just low. I said, oh, hell no. Nobody outside of Atlanta was really paying attention to what was going on with Homicide and the henchmen. But that all changed when Playboy much, Cardi hopped into the beef. Playboy Cardi was born in Atlanta and has been dropping music since 2011. He was on the grind for a long time and finally blew up in 2017. And by the time he started dissing Ola Runt, Cardi was one of the biggest stars in the game. Playboy Cardi never really gangbanged, but he still affiliated with Homicide and was tight with Big Sosa. And after Big Sosa got shot and killed, Cardi dropped the track, stopped breathing, and rapped. Ever since my brother died, I've been thinking about Homicide. He shouted out a bunch of Homicide members by name and said, Free Lil Tip, Free Migo Blip, Free All My Guys, Free Problem Child. I've been with Lil Demon and Lil Bino in R5, riding in the tank on 285. On the way to Front Street, who said we ain't outside? R5 was another rapper affiliated with Homicide who died in 2021. He was known for tracks like Lionheart and dropped a mixtape called Gang of 93 in 2020. But before he had a chance to blow up, R5 tragically passed away. It's not clear exactly what happened, but according to rumors, R5 committed suicide at the studio. Cardi took shots at the henchman too and rapped, Smoking on the henchman, got a nigga fried. I'm hanging with the Pyros, hanging with the Five. I got mob ties. I got fucking mob ties. I got niggas and chain gang on my side. Then he called Ola out by name and raps. I had the niggas shank Ola for a pie. I'm on demon time. I'm on demon time. Bitch, I'm on my body. I done lost my mind. Oh, I say to be right before like Cardi that. dropped the track, Ola Run got booked on a gun charge. The Atlanta police and FBI had an investigation called Operation Phoenix that was meant to take some of the most dangerous gangbangers off the street. And Ola Run got caught up in it. 11 other people were also arrested in Operation Phoenix. One of them was Kenneth Copeland, aka Lil Woody, the former YSL member who took the stand and testified against Young Thug in his RICO case. Around the same time that YSL got taken down, there was also paperwork going around showing all the gangs the Atlanta DA was investigating, which included Homicide and the henchmen. So a lot of fans thought they might get hit with a RICO next. Ola got convicted and went to prison, and Cardi allegedly got him stabbed while he was on the inside. There wasn't any evidence to back it up though, and Ola said that it was all just a publicity stunt from Cardi. Ola couldn't respond to stop breathing because he was locked up, but his homies clapped back at Cardi. A henchman affiliate named Benji Bluebill dropped the track Stop Bleeding and rapped, Yeah, your homie killed your homie. I bet you ain't know. You ain't tapped into these streets, so just cool out, little bro. There were rumors that Cardi's homie Problem Child backdoored their homie Big Sosa, and Benji Bluebills did Sosa again when he rapped, me and 2-4 smoke too much Sosa. Had to blow out, bro. How you gonna duck the switch? I glitch it, then your luck get low. Benji also called Cap on Ola getting stabbed and said, and Ola never got shanked in the feds. You capping, really? This a PSA. The Playboy pussy just like Hello Kitty. Cardi was dating Iggy Azalea back then, and Benji just hurt too with the bar. Everybody in the city know the henchman stepping, really. Everybody in the city know who doing all that killing. I smacked the red up out his dreads. I'm finna spit on Iggy. Ola's oh, homie 24 left eye dis Cardi 2 on the track whole lot of red and rapped. Playing little boy, I got Cardi. When I look through my lenses, it's a whole lot of red. I ain't been the same since his brother died. Smoking on the salsa got me traumatized. But while Ola's homies were handling the industry beef for Cardi, Ola had drama going on in prison. Ola was locked up with a rapper from Orlando named Glock 9. They both had ties to sex money murder and were cool with each other at first. But then Ola hopped on Twitter and called Glock 9 a rap. Glock 9 was one of the wildest dudes in the game. He had 12 arrests on his record before he even turned 18. 
and when he was 15, Glock 9 got booked for shooting one of his ops. Eventually, he hopped in the booth and started making music, but then he sparked a wild beef with another Orlando rapper named Hot Boy. Yeah. Glock 9 and Hot Boy didn't have any drama at first, but then something went down behind the scenes and they started turning Orlando into a war zone. Bodies were dropping on both sides, and the situation got so crazy that the police started a special investigation called Operation X-Force to take their gangs down. Eventually, Glock 9 and Hot Boy both got hit with RICO charges, and Glock 9 called a 7-year sentence for identity theft in a gun case. After Ola Runt called Glock 9 a rat, 1090 Jake found the actual paperwork from the case. Glock 9 took a plea deal on his charges, and part of the paperwork said something about cooperating. It turns out that Glock 9 never wanted to actually work with the cops though, and the next day after he signed the agreement, his lawyer made the prosecutors change the paperwork and take out the part about Glock 9 cooperating. The old plea agreement is still online though, and that's hmm. allegedly where the rumors about Glock 9 snitching came from. It turns out that he never worked with the cops though, and Glock 9 even tried to keep some of his ops out of jail. Back in 2020, two shooters got the drop on Glock 9 and tried to take him out. Glock 9 made out alive, and the cops booked the dudes who allegedly pulled the trigger. But then Glock 9 wrote a letter to the judge that said they weren't involved with the situation. The Glock 9 thing wasn't the only problem Ola had while he was locked up. Ola's little brother, Ola Cam, was also affiliated with the henchmen, and in 2022, the ops caught him and shot him to death. Cam was allegedly killed by Lil Rodney from a set called YC. A bunch of YC dudes were together when they spotted Cam and started letting off shots. They killed Cam, but they also killed their own homie, Baby Hot, on accident. Yeah, I Cam remember that shit. That shit happened at uh, Atlantic Station. I remember they did that. And it's just, them, young, them YNs in Atlanta is a different breed. If you don't know about them YNs in Atlanta, don't go over there asking no questions, because they will spank you. They will spank you down. Cam's death was a big loss for Ola and the henchmen, but they allegedly got back in a crazy way. Lil Rodney got booked after the shooter, and a dude from the henchman and Kevin Thompson was locked up in the same jail. Lil Rodney and Kevin Thompson were in different cell blocks, but that didn't stop Kevin Thompson from getting payback for Ola Cam. Thompson wanted to get at Lil Rodney so badly that he allegedly dug a tunnel through a wall inside the jail so he could get into Lil Rodney's cell block and stab him. Ola Runt got locked up right when his career was taken off, but in 2024, he got out of prison and hopped right back in the booth. He dropped his first day out track and ran up almost 500k views in a week, so he didn't fall off even though he's been out of the game for years. Oh, Ola man. still has a lot of enemies in Atlanta though, and he's already had drama in the industry too. Back in the day, Ola was cool with Young Thug's artist Lil Got It. They were linking up in the studio, and Thug even wanted to add Ola to the YSL label, but then something went down and sparked a beef with Ola and Lil Got It. Lil Got It allegedly asked Ola to be in a video for his track All oh, Okay before they even knew each other. It seemed like everything was cool, but then they started sending shots out of nowhere. According to Ola, it all started because he didn't put Lil Got It on his Feel Like Goo Up remix. I don't know. I think he just mad. He probably got mad. I ain't put him on the remix of the Feel Like Goo Up. He wanted to be on that. He wanted to be on that. Then Lil Got It took Ola off of one of his tracks, and that's when they really fell out. The beef never got too serious, though, because Young Thug stepped in and said they needed to squash it. They both pretty much dropped it after that. But what fans really want to know is if Ola's going to respond to Playboy Cardi. What's crazy about the situation is that Playboy Cardi just came back to the rap game too. After he dropped Whole Lot of Red in 2020, Cardi fell back and didn't drop any new projects. But at the same time Ola came home from prison, Cardi dropped his first new track in four years and announced a new album. Ola and Cardi might start beefing again since they're both back in the booth. The beef could now, definitely- I ain't gonna lie, this ain't even about Ola and Cardi, man. It's about some whole other deeper street shit. It's Cardi just the, the rap face of that. But there's really some deeper involvement going on, man. Y'all worry for about the wrong thing. Make sure Atlanta is clean. Make sure the streets is clean, man, because we can't have the people keep young people keep passing away to senseless violence. We gotta stop it. Say the kids.